afternoon. Uh, welcome to episode three of the Willie Badger podcast. Who knew I would get to three of these already? Um, I am coming to you from under a pile of knitwear, which uh, may not sound so surprising being as this is a knitting podcast, but uh, I'm uh, the only one in the house today. Everyone else is at school or the office and I am refusing to put the heating on like everyone else. So I have got on nice big knitted jumper. This is my uh, Big Jimmy Jab, or Big Jim, as Mega No Frills calls it, um, which has got, like, it's super cheat. It's not real colour work. It's uh, mosaic knitting. So just slip stitches. And this is, I had the skein a moment ago, I've put knitting on it. Um, this, In the Mood Surprise by Kremka, which I've mentioned before, which is a sort of gradient colour changing-y yarn. It's really good. Least effort you'll ever make to get a colour work yoke. Um, yes, so that's one element of the keep warm plan. And the other element is uh, a big mild garter stitch blanket. Yeah, I haven't actually finished knitting this blanket yet, but I'm snuggling under it anyway. It's um, <laughs> Three strands of uh, full ply held together, all sort of sock minis, which I have literally been grabbing at random out of a bag and uh, knitting together to try and keep me cosy because the world is so expensive now. So I feel at this point I should probably acknowledge that part of the reason I don't want to spend money on putting my heating on is because I have already spent quite a lot of money on yarn. I went to Stitch Fest on Sunday, which was down in Devon, um, from Bristol. It's only like an hour and a half drive, so, you know, that's not far, actually, is it? And um, I bought some things. Yeah, so I'll show you what I've bought. I think they'll be keeping me warm. It's fine. It's fine. It's an investment. Um, you put the heating on once, it warms you up that day. Not again. You know, the jumper, it keeps you warm a very long time. Anyway. Um, should we look at what I got? Uh, first up, I have a real, real weakness for Bird Street yarn. Um, so obviously I went straight to their stand when we got there, basically. Um, and there was one thing which was a project I had planned that I was going to knit for, which I needed some sport weight. So I got this, which is beautiful. It is the Merino Sport in the Bohemian colourway, which hopefully you can see, which is lovely lovely and with that I am well I have just cast on an Ursina by Jacqueline Seaslack um nice to have another knitting Jacqueline in the world uh anyway this uh is all I've got of it so far but it's knitting up beautifully and I'm really enjoying the uh half brioche stitch detail I have never done any kind of brioche knitting before um I've kind of always looked at it and thought oh, I should probably do that and just not done it. Uh, so I didn't even realise that this had the sort of brioche detailing, de detailing? That's not a word. Detailing in it. Um, I thought it was just normal rib when I looked at the thing. But uh, yeah, it's it's enjoyable. Um, I'm knitting the size six and I will be putting bust darts in because the girls require them. Um, I will let you know how it goes. It's very exciting. Because I was trying really hard to be good and to leave the stand without buying more things because I bought four skeins um, of the sport weight. And then I saw this. Look at it. It is an alpaca silk sport weight in this most magnificent of colours. Um, it's called Old Number 7 and I think if I had been at all prepared, I would have got this down. This is old number seven from a while ago, as you can see, it's the old branding. Um, so it's a colour that's been around for a while and that I adore. Uh, I think I am probably going to make a small shawlette or cowl out of this because it's just, I mean, you can see me just stroking it endlessly here. It's just so soft and so lovely. So I'm afraid that one did come home with me as well. So the other stand that I planned to hit up was Waku Yarns. Um, I absolutely love their variegated. They are beautiful. Um, they just do such lovely combinations of colours. And um, 
I knitted a Flutterbout shirt by Jessie May in one of their colourways last year. And the other day I decided that, you know, I didn't care that that's a summer shirt. I was going to kind of go late 90s and layer it over a long sleeve top. So I did that and I really enjoyed it. So I decided I was going to make another one. And I got this. Oh, it is beautiful. Uh, it is a blue face Leicester and silk mix. And uh, it's got, I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but it's got an incredible shine to it. And all of these beautiful flecks of colour through. They had a sample knitted up in this on the stand. And um, I kept saying to Lydia that it was looking at me and I needed to get some. So this, pretty. Um, it's called Macola 2.0. The colorway and they do have it on lots of different bases but just the uh the silk was calling to me at that point i was evidently feeling a bit fancy um after that i apparently lost most control and just kept buying things so this was one i've got from yv weaver which is a hand spun which is sort of around a, i mean it's hand spun that's always a little bit of a wiggly thick and thin thing isn't it it's around a sort of fat sport like dk so i am planning to use this for the contrast color on another big gym um because i live in my big gyms in the winter they're just really comfy um i when i was designing this i put a bust adjustment in so that you know even though it's a circular yoke there is more space in the front than there is in the back and uh I just find that makes it much more comfortable to wear. Um, so I've got two like full length ones, like this one, this one goes down into a split hem. Um, and then I've got one cropped one. I want another cropped one. Speaking of hand spun. I went right. So the problem with turning knitting into a job is that it's really hard to switch off from it. Um, I do knit to relax and I knit things that are not work, that are not designs. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of those in a minute. But even when I'm doing that, a small part of my brain is always going, oh, well, this is content. Oh, I can share this on Instagram and YouTube. And like, you know, it's never really switched off from the business side of things, which is fine. Like, I, I, I knew that was going to happen when I started this business even though I kind of started it accidentally um and yeah it yeah I knew that was happening this is not a woe is me story but what I thought would be nice would be to have a sort of related hobby that I uh do not attempt to monetize in any way so I picked up two new hobbies at Stitch Fest you may have guessed by my saying speaking of hand spun what one of them is spinning. So these are some hand dyed tops which I got from Gullrock Fibres who incidentally has the most beautiful yarns. Um, these were the only things I bought from her stand but that was purely because if I started on any of the actual yarns I would never stop and I would buy the whole thing. Um, so I got these three tops. This is a Corridale and uh, then I think the other two are Jacob tops. As you can see I have been uh, attempting to take bits off and spin them. Um, <laughs> my first attempts, really not good. Definitely could not monetize those. Uh, I will show you because I attempted to knit up my very first yarn and uh, this is what I got. I mean look at those. Those, just tuck that end in, uh, were not so I attempted to knit up my very first yarn. Mm. And, uh, yeah, that's not good, is it? This here is not really spun. It is basically a, a long length of unspun yarn. And uh, I, tried, I tried knitting it up on a, like, four millimetre needle because it was sort of, you know, you'll spin quite fine yarns. I got a top whirl, um spindle which I would show you but I'm a little bit scared of moving it in case all the yarn that is now looking a little bit better comes off of it um yeah I mean look at that that's all over the shop 
but it's really fun. Um, I have admittedly accidentally thrown the spindle across the room a couple of times whilst getting a bit carried away with the spinny bit. <laughs> but I think I'm starting to maybe get the hang of it. Next time I might even show you some of what I have made, um, other than this. I mean, what is that? What is that? That is terrible. Um, but yeah, I think I'm getting quite into it now. Um, I sort of sit down for 10, 15 minutes, do a little bit, go, okay, quit while you're ahead. Wander off and do something else. So I have been brave. I have gone to get the spindle. This is it. And that, I mean, let's ignore that bit. That's the bit of fluff I've left so that I can join in the next chunk. I think that's a, not too terrible. I'm gonna keep going, see how I get on. Maybe try and make something with it. Um, but I figured spinning might go well with my new second yarny hobby that isn't knitting, which is weaving. Because I did a weaving workshop um, with Tabby and Tweed at Stitch Fest, and I weaved a slightly rubbish but passable bookmark. Um, it's a bit loose, it's a bit sort of, you know, higgledy piggledy, but it's all right, I think. Um, so this was just done on a little hand loom. But I figured all the bits of like rubbish fibre that I completely mess up, rather than uh, getting rid of them, I can jam them in a weaving of some sort. I am also thinking of uh, seeing if my eldest, who is nearly six, wants to have a go at weaving. Because um, he will either really enjoy it or think it is the worst thing on earth. Because it doesn't involve trains or dinosaurs. But maybe I could try and get him to like weave something for a train or a dinosaur. Should we get on to some actual knitting after that little diversion because I have in fact finished some things. So first thing I'm going to show you is one that I did show you last time as a work in progress. Um, it had a body in one sleeve at that point in time. Uh, if this were a rubbish pub quiz I'd ask you to guess what it is but I'm just going to show you instead. It is The Great Gingham Rumblin by Jessie May. Um, there is, this is the second one of her designs I've mentioned today but it is a good one. Look at it. It is lovely. Um, I added one extra repeat to the body just to get it a little bit longer but still cropped because like my jeans will come up to my belly button. Um, and I did the sleeves a bit shorter because I get bored of sleeves but otherwise it is knit to pattern and I, I think my favourite thing about this is that contrast colour. So uh, the main colour is rosy green wool cheeky merino joy the contrast is Rivenitz Chimera um, in the succulents colourway and it looks incredible. Um, I was wearing this whilst teaching a colour work workshop last night and everyone was like, oh my god, that's so complex, it must have so many yarns in it. And I said, no, no, it's two. It is the magic yarn that does the work for you. I really like, it's a lovely pattern to wear. Um, I'm not generally a huge fan of bottom up, but I mean that decrease detail on the raglan, I get why she did it. Yeah, I get why she The did second it. thing is one that I haven't actually mentioned here before, but decided on a whim that I wanted to knit. Um, there's a lot of slipovers around at the moment. Um, sweater vests, for those who don't know what a slipover is. And uh, I, well, actually, the backstory behind this is I buy a lot of, not a lot, I've bought a few pairs of nice pyjamas that come with nice pyjama shirts uh, that I don't sleep in. I only sleep in the pyjama bottoms. So the shirts are just sort of sitting there and they've got nice patterns and all of that. But I felt like if I just wore just a pyjama shirt with my jeans, that would be weird. For some reason, my brain thinks wearing a pyjama shirt, a slipover and jeans is not weird. So I have knitted myself a Stockholm slipover v-neck um, by Petite Knit. Uh, so it's all a seamless pattern. I found it a little bit interesting in the sort of plus sizes with some of the grading. So I knit an XL um, and because the way you get to this sort of increased sort of 
you know, body circumferences just to keep knitting the increase rows. It meant that the V on this is quite, a, it's quite deep, quite a bit deeper than I think it would be for the smaller sizes. And um, I don't know how it would look knit up in a larger, but anyway, I mean, it's to go over things so it doesn't really matter anyway, but look at this fabric. I'm trying to swish it for you. Um, the original pattern is for Sunday, which is a four ply uh, merino, held with a mohair silk. But Megat No Frills has just got in a, I think it's a new Sand Nose Garn yarn, which is Alpaca Fulgatrad. I have probably said that wrong, which is a lace weight alpaca. So I knitted it with that instead. And if I hold it up, you can see it's not got all the sort of fluff and fuzz that you get with the merino silk, but it has got this gorgeous drape. And because my patterns are very, patterns, my colours are very close, but not completely matching, it's given this a slightly, slightly sort of pearlescent quality. Um, I am already wearing this a lot. It is just really handy to just throw on over things and to then not have like bulky arms under a coat. Um, May knit another one, may not. I'm still quite feeling the uh, feral sweater vest vibe. Um, I did a uh, knit your own bed socks workshop a couple of weeks ago um, and I knitted another pair of my Eager Basic bed socks. Uh, it's a pattern that's written for chunky yarn and eight millimeter needles, but I have used a DK and two four plies here. So I think the DK is double Sunday um, the four ply is one from the Camel's Yarn and one from Adventures in Yarn Craft that I had left over from other projects. And um, hoo -hoo, it is so snuggly and it is just lovely. Um, super, super quick knit as well. Um, it's knitted from the top down with a heel flap. Um, so good way to learn top down socks. But mostly I love these because you can, I don't know why I've given myself a sock beard. Uh, you can knit a pair in, well you can knit one sock in 90 minutes, two hours, so you can knit, depending on how late you go to bed and how much you ignore everything else you have to do in your life, possibly a pair in an evening, definitely a pair in two days. Love it. I am going to now attempt to clear up the absolute catastrophic mess I've made all around me, um, and then probably try some more spinning. So, Yes, I will speak to you all soon. Thank you very much for watching.